from Revelation, even though we actually get there before the end of the message, but um, I want to focus on, of course, this is December, so we're thinking about the coming of the Lord Jesus. A lot of talk about Jesus during this month. Celebrations related, the lights are out, the trees are being set in place, gifts will be given. All of these things are part of um, um, this season. But I'm going to start at a resurrection story, actually, in um, Matthew 24. I mean, I'm sorry, Luke 24. And um, where the two on the road to Emmaus. met Jesus, but they didn't realize who it was. It picks up in Luke 24, verse 13. Behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. Now, that same day is the first day when the women had been to the tomb. And, G and Jesus' body was not there. So they were announcing He had been raised from the dead. And then these two are on the road to Emmaus. They talked together of all the things which had happened, meaning, you know, uh, the questions related, I'm sure, to uh, the empty tomb, the missing body, and yeah, the strange story that, that He was gone. So it was while they conversed, verse 15, and reasoned that Jesus Himself drew near and went with them. And verse 16 is important. Their eyes were restrained so that they did not know Him. And He said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? And so he goes into this conversation with them related to the events of the day. And so they kind of tell him the events of the day. And then in verse 25, he says, Foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, verse 27, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Verse 28. They drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone farther, and they constrained him, saying, Abide with us. It is toward the evening, and the day is far spent. Verse 30. Now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. In verse 31, again, this is significant today. Their eyes were opened and they knew him. And he vanished from their sight. They rose up, verse 33, that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together and said, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Now, here's the story. It's interesting. They went through this whole conversation with Jesus. They heard the, the words of the prophets uh, and the explanations from the prophets and the Old Testament prophecies related to Jesus as they interacted with Him and yet still did not know Him. Their eyes were constrained. They had all of this information, but yet did not know Him, did not recognize Him, did not know Him, the Scripture says. And then finally, when their eyes were opened, they knew Him, down in verse 31. The question in the message today is, we're asking ourselves, have I seen Jesus? Have I seen Jesus? I want you to turn to the person next to you and say to them, Have I seen Jesus? 
How do you answer such a question? Have I seen Jesus? Wow. Yeah. A lot of people talking about their view of Jesus today. But I'm wondering what is our vision? What is our view? We've studied in Revelation. We, we saw John's vision of Jesus. As we go through the Gospels, we see a portrayal of the life of Jesus in the four Gospels. Jesus even asked his apostles, who do you say I am? He asked Peter that. So the question today we have, we're asking ourselves, have I seen Jesus? Have I clearly seen the Jesus of the past? The one that's revealed in the scriptures and the prophets. The one that the Bible portrays as the coming one. Have I clearly seen the resurrected Jesus? The Jesus of the present? What does He mean to me? How is, uh, how is uh, uh, his, my knowledge of Him and my relationship to Him? Have I clearly seen him? the resurrected Jesus? The apostles saw. They were eyewitnesses. But in this case, see means, have I known Him? Have I clearly seen the, the soon coming Jesus? Am I anticipating, eagerly awaiting Him? And His coming. But first we'll talk about the Jesus of the past. In John's Gospel, we walked through, uh, we looked at His view of Jesus. And as we go all the way back to the very beginning of His Gospel, in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is John's view of, because John had been with Jesus. He had truly seen Him and also known Him. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. Without Him, nothing was made that was made. In Him was life. And the light was the light of men. This, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. John's word about Jesus he went further to say the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. In other words, they had been with Him. They had experienced the God-man. Go over to John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse 13. In the words of Jesus to Nicodemus, Jesus said, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. What words are these? It's come, the man who had come from heaven. Verse 31 in John 3, verse 31. John the Baptist's words related to Jesus. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. John the Baptist's testimony about Jesus. He came from heaven. Chapter 6 in John's Gospel. Verse 32. Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. Verse 33. For the bread of God is He who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus said Himself, I came from heaven. Verse 38 in John 6, I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of Him who sent me. I have come down from heaven. 
the God man. Verse 42. They said, Is not this, these are the Jews, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says? So the Jews understood exactly what Jesus was saying. How is it that he says, quote, I have come down from heaven. The words of Jesus, the God-man, the man from heaven. Have I clearly seen the Jesus of the past? The one who has fulfilled all prophecy. If we were to take uh, all the prophecies in the Old Testament and list them, we would have enough of them for every day of the year. Can you imagine that? We're going to look in Hebrews chapter 1. The writer of Hebrews listed several of these prophecies related to Jesus and the past. He reached into the Psalms. And he reached into different, especially the Psalms, but different places in the Old Testament that are related to this Jesus. In Hebrews 1 verse 5, to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. The writer of Hebrews wanted to make sure we understood that Psalm 2 was applied to Jesus. He understood that. Written in the time of David, I'm sure. Applied to the Lord Jesus Christ. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Verse 6. When he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says... Let all the angels of God worship Him. Verse 6. Hebrews 1, verse 6. Verse 7. Of the, we, and of the angels, He says, who makes His angels spirits and His ministers flame, a flame of fire. Again, He's referring to Psalm 104 in this case. In verse 8. But to the Son, He says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. So to angels, He says one thing, but to the Son, He says something else. Speaking to the Son, He says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of Your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Verse 8 and 9. In this passage, he's referring to Psalm 45, verse 6 and 7. And further, down to verse 12. Like, no, I need to read 10 through 12. You, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth. As the heavens are the work of your hands, they will perish, but you will remain. They will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will fold them up and they will be changed, but you are the same and your years will not fail. Through verse 12, okay, again, it's a quote from Psalm 102. So the writer of the Hebrews understood that the writer of the Psalms was in reference to Jesus Christ. It's a very important point here. Because these writers were seeing things. The psalmist was writing as prophecy related to Jesus Christ hundreds of years before the time of Jesus. And finally, in verse 13, But the which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. 
He never said this kind of language to angels. Jesus Christ, the Son, was never, ever an angel. It was said of the Son in Psalm 110, verse 1. You can go back and see that. God's Word is clear. He is the Messiah, the one who came to fulfill prophecy. Not just some prophecy, but all prophecy. Have I clearly seen the Jesus of the past? The image of the invisible God. Look in Colossians. Book of Colossians chapter 1. Interesting verse here. Verse 15. In reference to Jesus Christ, the one in whom we have redemption, the one who's delivered us from the power of darkness, put us in the kingdom of His Son, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, it is said that He is the image of the invisible God. He is the image of the invisible God. And by Him all things were created, in verse 16, that are in heaven and that are on the earth. You want to know about creation. Your Bible tells you about creation. All things are created by Him. By Him all things were created. That's Colossians 1, 16. Things in heaven and on earth. Things that are visible and things are invisible. The whole invisible world. Molecules and molecular structure and atoms and all of these. This whole invisible world created by Him. All principalities and powers. All things created through Him and for Him. He is before all things. And, and in Him all things consist. He also holds all things together. This is where we have gravity. If He lets go, we're gone. Huh. 